Hey, Ian, how's it going? Peter, it's going great. How about you? I am miserable in every possible way, but hockey's back, and that's only a small portion of why I'm miserable in every single way. Woo! <laughs> I have a problem, though. I what? forgot entirely how to hockey. Oh, no. Oh, I, no. I forgot who the players were. I apparently missed some rule changes. There's been a lot that's happened, and I'm way behind the eight ball here. So I was hoping that I could tell you what I remember about the sport and what I think has happened since the whole coronavirus thing started. And you could just sort of set me straight and let me know where I'm, uh, I'm off track or if there's any pertinent details I've missed. And I was thinking that if I'm having these problems, maybe our, our audience may be having the same problems. And this would be a good exercise to sort of jog some memories. What do you think? I think that's a great idea, and I, and I also want to add this context, that over the last, I think, four or five months, I've been covering everything that's been happening for about eight to 12 hours a day, every day. <laughs> so if I don't know something, that that everyone won't know that thing. Yeah, so I, I, I consider fair. you the authority on literally everything that's happened uh, <laughs> since, let's say, March 12th. If it's all right with you, I'd like to show you a PowerPoint presentation that I put together. Is that all right? Sure, sure. Let's see it. All right, let's hop to the PowerPoint presentation now. All right, here we go. Uh, and this is a presentation uh, I call the Washington Capitals 2020 Part 2. Uh, I made it, but uh, it will be uh, ultimately fixed by you. So as we go uh, through this, I'm just going to share what I know, which I think will be sort of a cartoonish simplification of the facts. And you'll set me straight. Does that sound OK to you? That does, but really quick question. What am I seeing over here in what the you, background? What do you mean? What are you seeing? Like, 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 like what is the scene? Like, what? This is a, a template I just pulled off the internet. Okay. Um, it looks like Oompa Loompa Town or something. Yeah, these are like some sugar plum kind of trees. <laughs> it's kind of like a, you know, a, a nice little vibe here. Cool with you? Yeah, it sounds great. All right. So uh, in this presentation, uh, I will discuss the Washington Capitals. Times New Roman. Oh, oh, and, oh, you missed this. You missed the letter there. All right, go ahead. Sorry. Um, did I? Uh, and we'll go over some news and views. Uh, that's it. That's the entire presentation. So it's just the capitals and then news and views. <laughs> Moving on. By the way, this happened before the coronavirus outbreak. And I think it really does represent the kind of behaviors that we don't do in public anymore. Don't you agree? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nothing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Let's begin with discussing the Washington Capitals. Uh, we're okay. just going to go player by player here, okay? All right. Uh, this is Nick Backstrom. Uh, he had 12 goals and 42 assists before the season paused. Uh, and he had a pretty good expected goals percentage. I don't think I've got a lot of fancy stats in here. I think that might be the only one. Uh, I don't have anything to say about him. He's just Nicky. Uh, there's nothing interesting about him literally ever. Do you remember that he signed a five-year contract extension uh, two months before the coronavirus. No, outbreak. with the Capitals? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he's here until 2026 or whatever? Yeah, or 25, yeah. That's great. He's, I mean, he's flawless. He's just like 45% of a full human being, as far as I can tell. <laughs> and people think he's a sweetheart and he's a murderous son of a bee, right? Yeah. Have Have you noticed on Twitter, by the way, that some people spell it Nikki with an E? That's like Nikki. Yeah. It's, it's like uh, you'll see later. I'll refer it's to. It's on his gloves. It's on his gloves too. Wait, he does it. That. So it's like maybe like yeah. a Swedish thing. Yeah. He. I, uh, I actually don't know this weird obscure fact. All I know is that he he writes Nikki with an E on his on his gloves. So. Oh, I thought it was like me spelling the caps with an E, but it's apparently just a genuine cultural difference. It's like OV with an IE on his stick. Oh, I hate that. No one spells it. Everyone spells it OVI. Nate, so, Nate yeah. did for like two weeks, and that's the reason why half the internet yeah. is broken. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's Nate Yule, former PR guy for the Caps. Uh, yeah, that's, I think trip. that's my entire slide about uh, uh, Nikki Backstrom. Not bad. Uh, this is Travis Boyd. Goes by the nickname Travis. Uh, I think he's going to be a third line boy, from what no. I understand. Well, no. wait. Because when other boys leave for babies, isn't he supposed to slot in on the third line? Maybe I, not. 
maybe not Todd Damn. Reardon. Todd Reardon teased that it might be Connor McMichael who might get that uh, opportunity. They added Connor McMichael to the uh, 31 player roster, Peter, 31 players uh, <laughs> for the 2020 postseason. Hypothetically, so it may not be Boyd. Hypothetically, let's just put that there. What if I didn't know what? What would you say to somebody who said, "What is a Connor McMichael?" It's like it's like Connor McDavid, but the very very light version. It's like <laughs> one of my child's toys that should have two batteries, but it has one. I get you. Yeah. Did you, did you ever drink um, Milwaukee's Best uh, in in college or anything like that? I know you weren't a big beer drinker. I wasn't either. But <laughs> the only thing I drank in college was a wine called Relax. Which... <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I didn't drink wine in college unless it had the word fortified in front of it. So good for you. That's my entire slide on Travis Boyd. Thank you for the background right. here. Uh, this next slide's about John Norris Carlson. Uh, he. The I'm, illustration I, has his five head really nice there. Thank Yes, thank you. That, uh, Claire did that uh, as part Good of job, our Claire. Instagram thing. It's gorgeous. The um, He is a Norris finalist is what I read on our website. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's great. The The reasons for that, I think, are mostly based in his goal scoring. Is this correct? Yes. Um, I, I think he, he scored so many freaking points that he was a nominee uh, and he played very well in the beginning of the season. But then uh, towards the end, which hopefully you did forget during the coronavirus <laughs> pandemic, he was awful. But uh, <laughs> who knows if he'll win? Excellent. Uh, uh, well, he's up against like Roman Josi, right? Yeah. And uh, oh, God, Hedman. Yeah. Victor Hedman. OK, those are two really good defensemen. I would think Roman josie has got it. Uh, yeah. And I, my, my understanding is that he'll be with uh, Michael Kempney as a defensive pairing as they I think that's more or less how they ended part of the season. Uh, I, that I'm actually not sure of. Uh, they've been rotating guys in and out. Uh, Kempney was in there uh, towards the end of training camp uh, 2.0. Uh, they have eight you know, competent guys that, that could play, I think. So who's the eighth? I know Gudis and then Faravari. Faravari. Um, yeah, they have cool. Jensen. Um, oh, all so. the other players are in this presentation and you don't have to name them. Oh, but. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. My bad. So let's, let's move on past uh, John Norris Carlson. This is Brendan, Brandon Dillon, who uh, has not scored any points, but he, he's only played 10 games from the, from the caps since he was traded from the sharks. Yeah, uh, I think he plays with Dmitry Orlov, although yes, I could see yes. how that could change. Um, he was a temporary TikToker. <laughs> is this correct? This is true. This is true. Uh, he got chirped by his teammates too much, even though he's an excellent dancer. And I wish he would come back to the TikTok, though. Probably no one should be on the TikTok because it's owned by China. And <laughs> it's Lucy Goosey. Let me tell you a little something about American social media companies <laughs> the yeah so th th this is really off brand for the capitals to like bull not like in a friendly way bully a, a, a fellow player off of a, a fun platform yeah like he was an amazing like it was i admire him as yeah. a dancer oh so i did, did not know that uh he said hopefully i can be here i guess intending that he wants to resign with the capitals that's something that everybody says though right i mean that's like what uh, okay so i think there's a little bit more context to that uh, which is people thought that he'd be priced out of Washington. So mm. everyone kind of assumed he wouldn't be here. He also, uh, he said two or three different times he wanted to kind of work out a deal with the Capitals, but he was leaving it to his agent. He also slipped a uh, tweet to the newly formed Seattle Kraken, Peter, who I'm not sure you know about, but that's a team now. And uh, the Seattle Kraken are going to take the ice in 2021. And Dylan said, I can't wait to play against you with the Capitals. So mm. that seems to be another hint. Wow. Mm. Thank you for that so, little nugget. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Moving on uh, to uh, Nick Dowd. Uh, this is Nick Dowd. I have nothing. <laughs> <laughs> He's a fourth line center. Uh, podcaster. Play with, yeah. Yep. Yeah, podcaster. He brought his podcasting gear to the bubble. Cool. Uh, which, 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 which I read. Uh, yeah, My... he has a son. He has a son named Louie. Oh, that's cute. Who was who was born on uh, New Year's Eve? So oh, I remember that from when there was uh, well the before times. 
Yeah, yeah, before times. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's yeah. that's uh, that's great for good fourth liner. Yeah. Has a good dog. Very good dog. Bury the lead. Well, well who is his dog? Uh, no, I always forget his dog. What name. kind of dog? You don't know dog types, do you? Though. You don't know. Is it a do, no, it's not. A do golden you know retriever. dog breeds? Is it a golden retriever? Look it up. I, I I don't remember. I don't really know how to look things up while I'm doing a video I, thing. Okay, sure. <laughs> I just I'm just worried that like search history shows up and all of a sudden I'm gonna get like 2020 <laughs> is the year it happens. Like we get canceled. Not that we do anything. We're boring. All right, Nick Dowd is over. Oh, I have a question mark in there. That's good. Um, Lars the Tiger Eller. I actually played into his normal nickname for once. Um, he's having a baby. He is baby, and he's having a baby. Is this correct? Yes, his baby is scheduled to arrive on Earth. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Ready for this? Whoa! Whoa! You knew that one. Oh, well, I, I went to his tag on Russian Machine and oh, just, like, okay. skimmed it. There you go. There you uh, go. And, and it shot out at me because, that's first of all, it's 8-8 eight, eight day. Oh, yeah. That's right. And uh, that's the, it's the name of a no effects song off of an album they put out in, like, the late 90s. I think about uh, Jerry Garcia passing away. Although Jerry Garcia, obviously, of the Grateful Dead, passed away on August 9th. But the punk band No Effects made a song that's like celebrated him dying, which is uncool, but it's a good song, and I like I like the Grateful Dead too. Terrapin Station's good. Um, that's I think everything I have about Lars Eller. I don't know what he, the hell you do when he leaves, and I, another blonde like third liner is going to leave too. That sounds like a thing. Yeah, well, Carl Hagelin, who I'm sorry, first I'm of sorry, all, in the lead. Yeah, we're getting there in a minute, but okay. I'm sorry. But he, his baby uh, is uh, the due date is in September. Yes. Hmm. So there shouldn't be overlap, hopefully. Um, Lars Eller, uh, during the pandemic, uh, donated a, uh, I don't even know, like a UV light. Uh, oh yeah, chamber. that was cool. Yeah. I saw yeah, that. he he donated. I think it was to a homeless sh uh, a homeless shelter in DC. Um, he worked um, with a company to to help make that done. So that was really cool of Lars. It's a way to go, Lars. Very, yeah, very sophisticated Lars Eller. I He's like the glasses. He's a scientist now. Thank you. He's kind of cross-eyed, right? <laughs> yeah, in, this, in this illustration. All right, uh, good stuff on that. What's next? Let's find out. Using the cube transition here. Uh, Radko oh, Gu wow. Gudash, who I still, yeah. <laughs> so he kind of had sort of like a rough, time during the seas the season um because he was sort of coming in and out of the lineup uh i just wrote down 7d and said let's move on to the next guy uh that said i did get a text message that he was doing a cool like like this signal thing with his hand uh and like some caps social media stuff earlier uh just being a cool dude um i think that was from our website i can't tell um but is he gonna play probably not right uh it, it looks like he isn't and i'm I don't know. I I liked him on the third pairing. I mean, he struggled towards the end, but um, a fun thing about Radko was uh, he did one of those honest check interviews that oh yeah that we love to publish on our website, which everyone loves. And uh, he was like, the NHL shouldn't come back. And yeah, he's right. I love that guy. I don't know. It was controversial, but I don't. He said he said lots of honest good things. He also said that. Uh, there was there was no chance he was going to come back to the Capitals next year. I'm sorry, there was no chance the Capitals would offer him a contract. So, um, so yeah, yeah. I guess they love gotta... the Dadco. Love the Dadco. Yeah, he's, I like him a lot. Uh, I guess he's going to have a hard time fitting into the lineup though, especially if like one of the guys they're about to get to continues sort of playing well, like he did sort of down the stretch, which we'll talk about in a second. Sure. That's literally it for. Oh, I have the word. I have a simping. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, Carl the Dread Robert, the Dread Pirate Roberts Hacklin. Uh, he's got a baby. Uh, the yeah. second second sort of uh, baby coming up you know, in this period, September-ish. I think that's it. I think that's all I've got. Seems really iffy to me that like he could leave like if the Caps are in like the this Stanley Cup final. Uh, and he's like, all right, see you. <laughs> but babies, I mean, babies are, are bigger than, are they bigger than the cup? I don't know. I don't have any. 
Uh, I would say yes. <laughs> okay. I defer I defer to you. The worst he's thing on the planet. Two. He's already won two. He's already won two. So. Oh, good point. But it, look, the worst thing on the planet is anyone with, like, strong opinions about parenting. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah. I, we, we talked about this when you had yours, and I talked about this with Nathan when he had his, but it was like, it seems like that's a thing where if people talk about it on the internet, they generally get into trouble. So I'll, I'll stay out of it. Uh, that's the coral from Walking Dead. You don't understand that reference at all. I, I have no idea what, what that is. No, uh, it's not. I'm not going to explain it. It's not good. You know, you know, you know, pop culture, you know, still not great. At didn't. It. Yeah. Didn't get any better during the uh, uh, lockdown. No. All right. Good. I no. did. I did more hockey than I did before. <laughs> it makes no sense. All uh, right. Uh, Garnet Hathaway. <laughs> this is a good one. I like this one. So uh, uh, here we go. Yeah. Go. Uh, Ian, this is your prompt. Yeah. Uh, so Garnet was nominated for the King Clancy uh, Memorial Trophy, which goes to a player that shows amazing leadership and usually does a lot of charity work. Uh, Garnet did a lot of charity work and he also spit on a dude and didn't actually apologize to the person. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Shut up, Ian. You you saw that coming. Next slide. No, I, li I like Garden Hathaway. the way. Ever listen? <laughs> who among us has not spat on a, 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 a somebody who sucker punched us? Oh, you haven't. Oh, okay. Well, you can cast the first stone. <laughs> uh, interesting fact about uh, Garnet Hathaway and Carl Hagelin is I saw them on the very last day of the uh, before times season on March twelfth. Um, yeah, before times because they were doing a radio spot for Lindsay uh, Motors, and they were gonna, uh, and I was doing a behind the scenes thing. And uh, yeah, I don't even think those spots made it out or I haven't seen them or whatever. So, uh, but yeah, I, I remember that day. Studio. That was a weird, I mean, that was a that weird was a week. Really weird day, yeah. All right, good stuff. Oh, I have, I, I just pulled this up and uh, I did really bad placement, but like you can't see this, but our like talking hands are right over top of this. Really good design by me. But uh, yeah. Garnet Hathaway, one of the highest, uh, sh danger per shot on the whole team oh. so like he's I, he's uh an underrated offensive player i think he's sort of got like that like jay beagle uh deadly sense to him at least that's what i recall from reading my own articles from the before times i recall him having a lot of slam dunks oh yeah <laughs> just like wide <laughs> so, open nets that just <laughs> yeah all right so somebody's a, juicing his numbers for him maybe 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 not a finisher but yeah fair enough moving on brayden holby two cool to have a nickname uh Ooh. also i like so let's let's get into this because this is the thing uh he's going to be the team's goalie going into the play in playoff or whatever or i guess they're just gonna play the playoffs right um because well, well let's, let's let's talk about it. What, what's the other thing that's happening with the goalies because i actually know this part. so so Ilya samsonov uh suffered an injury during the lockdown according to the capitals and uh, did not travel with the team to Toronto, so he will not be participating in the playoffs. So there isn't really a goaltending controversy. A controversy. Controversy. <laughs> so, it's the anniversary of a controversy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so yeah. Uh, do you want more facts about Holpe? I no, because here, here's the thing. This is this is where the my ambivalence gets really ambivalent because. Holpe was basically done, right? Like, let's say, if, like, let's yeah. say the season was done, they never came back. Holpe almost certainly would not have come back to the Capitals because he's going to command a big payday. That said, like, his like value had been sort of declining over the last like two seasons as he just didn't put up the best numbers, uh, and he had sort of righted the ship a few, like maybe like a month, maybe month and change before mm -hmm. you know the coronavirus hit. Uh, and I'm just super excited to see where he stands. Uh, we'll talk more about this in a couple of players, but like, there seems like there's a whole lot of like uh, opportunity for players to sort of like reestablish themselves, especially the ones that have been struggling with like maybe some of like the uh, temporary problems that may have been like plaguing them or plaguing the team overall. And like, we get we're basically getting like bonus Braden here. Um, so of all the things I'm sort of grateful for, this is probably at the top of the list as like. I'm you know I'm on record as saying that he's probably my favorite Washington Capitals player uh, in history yet, um, but it's kind of it's it's kind of crazy that like he's playing without a net, uh, and then obviously he's playing with a literal net like a goalie net, but like you know like he's not 
it doesn't matter. Uh, contract's up, and uh, he brought his guitar to the bubble, huh? All right, all right, now, one thing about the contract, Peter, is remember that the NHL and the NHLPA, when they agreed to the return to play, they also signed a new, I believe, five-year extension, I believe, to the CBA, or a new one, and the... Let's see. And the high limit of the salary cap is going to remain the same as last year. Now, combined with Holtby's bad stats, I would say a lot of it is due to the team defense. Uh, it it seems pretty. It seems way more likely than before that they might bring him back if he's interested in a one or two year deal. Really? Um, yeah. So I actually think before the season, I was like, he's not coming back. But then he, but then he had a save percentage under 900, mm -hmm. under the Mendoza line for uh, goalies, and uh, yeah. So, so if he takes like a big pay cut, like he would be more likely to come back. I don't know if he would even need to take a big pay cut. Uh, they're gonna lose the Gudis yeah. uh, contract, and I think there's just gonna be wiggle room if he wants to take something around six or seven, mm. uh, and then they want to bring back Dylan with a moderate increase in, in pay, uh, I think they could make that happen. Um, so that'll be interesting to see what they do, but they also have to re-sign some other guy next year. Uh, then on your guitar note, he did bring a guitar to the bubble along with like five other random NHL players. I didn't know there was so many guys who were like, I bet they all dude, suck that so dude in, hard. That dude in college that was sitting at your dorm before the doors where you're going to swipe your card. But anyways, but uh, he also brought two the doors. Oh, God. Sorry. <laughs> was that Wonderwall? <laughs> You freaking know that was Wonderwall, yeah. <laughs> he also brought two fedoras, one dark one and one tan one, uh, because because he can't be in a bubble with just one fedora, which I think is the most ridiculous thing. That's awesome. So, let's let's yeah. just draw a quick fedora on the dude. Oh it's, no, <laughs> that's actually pretty decent. That was actually not yeah, bad. Yeah, can you draw a fedora on him? How are you going to put this on him? Oh, can can you see what I'm drawing? Yeah, I can. Oh, I did that's I drew a fedora. Oh, I don't see it. Oh, yeah, no. you, you can't see what I draw. I've been I've been adding little annotations the whole time. You're missing out. Oh, I'm no. sorry. You'll you'll see it when later on. I'm sorry. Alrighty. Moving on to uh I forget. Who's in the, oh, I have a little gif of, of him breathing. That's great. Cool. All right. Nick Jensen, one of the defensemen we were talking about, right? So I think he's a third pairing boy. Could I actually be have no idea. Does not again, me, again. I, I did a lot of cap stuff. No idea. <laughs> well, there's what what lines were you dealing with? You were just dealing with who got a dog and yeah. who was cool <laughs> on social media. Um, I my recollection is that like maybe like since like the new year. Actually, I probably have like a line graph of this coming up in a second. But uh, he'd been playing or he had been, I think, playing with Sieg's uh, uh, Jonas Siegenthaler, maybe. Yeah. Uh, and uh, oh, this is Winnie the Pooh. I thought I had a graph. <laughs> I don't know why I put Winnie the Pooh in there. Anyway, Nick Jensen, uh, I like two weeks before the season like stopped. I was like, oh, yeah, they should probably bench him. And then as soon as I like hit publish on the article, he's like, no, I'm playing good. He was like Bobby Orr, like <laughs> offensively. No, uh, he was like, dude, remember that spin move he did against, I think it was the Red Wings? Like, no, dude, I don't, my, my memory is totally coronavirus <laughs> out. I don't remember anything. <laughs> I know it does seem like 10 years ago. Yeah. Okay. Jensen's great. Here, I think, is one of the most interesting players that we've got, right? So, um, by the way, again, I love Claire's illustrations, but this does not do credit to the man's <laughs> face shape. It's a much better face shape than it's in here. So, I want to talk about the leg and the thigh. So, what, like, it was like a two years ago now, he he suffered like a massive injury, compartment syndrome, pretty serious injury, right? No, not compartment syndrome. That was Christian Juice. Oh, my best. Yeah, who is no longer on the team. Uh, Kempney suffered, I believe, a torn hamstring. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. He And he was looking pretty terrible to start the season, just like not fast. But I feel like if any player, uh, I was like sort of thinking through the capitals, it's like if any player would probably benefit from his extra time off, as long as he was getting like sufficient conditioning, I think it would be him. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I'm... Um, 
I think he'll play with John Carlson unless Carlson's with Dylan. You could see it going either way. And I think we saw a lot of Carlson Dylan late in the season. Yeah. Um, before. But uh, I liked where things were going. And I wonder if he can keep it up. Um, I, I just like to see it. Oh, yeah. So check out this bad boy here. And um, wow. Gonna... Yeah, this is like encouraging, right? So like um, he got a lot sort of better, I guess, around the game 30, which was New Year's. This was cumulative on ice uh, expected goal. So like he was pretty underwater up until about halfway through the season, the uh, the, the shortened season, and then got a lot better after that. It's pretty good, right? Yeah. Uh, right. Now, I have a question. I have a few things to say about Kempney is that uh, I recall that his wife uh, or girlfriend, Nicola, did a stick auction. She came up with a stick auction that like a third of the NHL teams did which were to raise money for coronavirus research. And then I remember Kempney was doing squats in on the balcony <laughs> of his apartment or something in the Czech Republic. And then, Peter, I want to quiz you. Did we post anything about Michael Kempney being shirtless during the pandemic? I, ha I mean, I have to assume yes. Yeah, correct. <laughs> I think it was at least Whew, two. That was not a tough this one. Guy, yeah, this guy is shirtless so many times. No, I think I think I like, remember like explicitly like like the shirtless tag getting used. And I was like, all right, <laughs> here we go. Game on. Moving, moving, moving on. Unless you have more to talk about. No, oh, no. Uh, Ilya Kovalchuk joined at the uh, trade deadline. Yep. We get bonus Ilya Kovalchuk. He's been good. He just scored the one goal. I think I was at the game where he scored it. You didn't get to go to your game, right? You were you had a game that like was like on like the seventeenth, oh, yeah. right? I got tickets for Ethan's third birthday. That sucks, man. <clears throat> yeah, that and then the, the hundred fifty thousand people dying sucks. Yeah, the latter part much worse. Yeah, um, I, I it's it's Ilya Kovalchuk. He's way better than I thought he would be. <laughs> I don't know what to say. He's only he's got what four points in seven games, whatever. But that's fun, right? Yeah, TikTok video he did with the Russian Five. That was uh, cute too. There was a so like there was that that was like all of them sort of like posing together. That was not, that was a lovely thing. Yeah. It was like I don't know something like that. I don't know. Please don't put that on the internet. Uh, would you do uh, that? Would you do that again? Just real? No, like, no. I'm good. I'm good. Okay. I'm good. All right. Uh, I'm trying to see. Kovi worked out with Daniel Cormier's trainer. Uh, during the pandemic at the end there. Mm -hmm. uh, Daniel Cormier is a uh, championship winning bo uh, MMA fighter uh, and he fought in the Olympics. So. Oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah. So that was pretty legit. He, and then he then he made some kind of quip about, uh, oh, he was punching uh, a punching bag and he said, it's going to be the Penguins. And, <laughs> that's, and that's when I fell in love with Kobe. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> that's cute. Yeah. Uh, all right, uh, Evgeny, Evgeny Kuznetsov. Oh, your favorite player. Oh, sweetie. <laughs> uh, what do you think that he thinks of his season so far? Probably it's been great because he has 52 points. Hey, good math. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a lot of assists. He's sort of racking them up. I know like there were times when he was actually, I think I probably have it on here, but he's on the top line. Yeah, he's. He had been at like training camp playing with uh was it Wilson and Ovechkin? Yeah. So that's not my favorite top line combo, but maybe yeah. the this, you know, pause will allow him to flip a switch and we'll see, you know, twenty eighteen playoff Kuznetsov, which was, you know, peak of his powers. Yeah. Game off the white. You know, I, I thought that too, and then I watched the exhibition game or the, the scrimmage last week. Nope. Yeah, <laughs> let me let me, I remember, let, I let me hold him, on to this fantasy a little bit longer, bud. <laughs> I remember him losing two consecutive defensive zone faceoffs to. Uh, oh no, I forgot his name. It's some scrub from Hershey, or <laughs> don't call him a scrub, but Carolina. Uh, yeah, but uh, but I made a note of that on the Russian Machine Twitter, and then. Uh, the guy like favorited it. No way. <laughs> like, he was like, he got he ended up getting cut. Oh frick, who was it? I can't. Oh, that's that's one. brutal. Um, I didn't tell you this, but I was playing the new video game Valorant with a guy from like the like some Michigan uh um, NH uh what, what's the American U.S. Developmental League? 
Like, so I was you playing like a, a, a tactical first person shooter with like, you know, some guy from some team. And I looked him up and he's like, yeah, like four points, whatever. It's not a big deal. Well, that's cool, though. I guess. Um, oh, speaking of video games, our boy quit playing NHL 19 or whatever. Rage quit, <laughs> right? Yeah, he, yeah. Well, he didn't. No one admitted it to it. But like all the evidence suggests that he rage quit during an NHL uh, 20 tournament <laughs> against uh, Huberdale. <laughs> Freaking excellent. So he, like, he, he just like, oh, I suck at this thing, threw his controller and just said, that's it, and, and uninstalled and just got out forever, huh? Yeah, does that count as toxic masculinity? Uh, I think uh, if he destroyed any property or <laughs> used any slurs, yes. But if he's just like, you know what? I'm going to do a jigsaw puzzle. Then it's fine. You okay. know what? Okay. I'm going to binge watch Dark on Netflix. Yeah, it was, probably, it was probably that. Do you think that Kuznetsov watches Outlander? Oh, gosh. The Scottish show that yeah. I was watching? Oh, okay, of no. all of the Capitals players, which who is most likely to watch Outlander? And why is it Tom Wilson? Yeah, Tom Wilson. I was going to say Wilson. All right, well, I don't we'll, know, because it has, a very, it has Titanic feels. Like, it has a Titanic feel, maybe. I don't know. We'll, we'll, I, I, the we'll time del- traveling through the stones, uh, uh, it's tough. Are you fully you know? caught up on that show? Yeah, I, I watched the whole thing. Okay. And I loved it. I loved it. Um, the, the first people, season was, yeah. Where people are like, are like, I'm 30 minutes into this video with Russian Machine. They just started talking about bodice ripping, time traveling, romance, <laughs> and so. Uh, Remember, you gotta have the gym stones. Yes. Yeah, uh, and it'll only take you where you want to go. <laughs> yeah. All right. Moving on. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I've got some more graphics here. Uh, this is a, a Wowie, a with or without you chart. So over here at the top right is Tom when he is. How do, how do you read these things again? I don't this, know. This is Tom I when he's I never knew. without Kuznetsov. So this is Tom Wilson with 92. So where this 92 means that they're playing really, really good when it's Tom without Kuznetsov. And down here where it's bad is Tom with Kuznetsov. So it's really clear that somebody's pulling somebody up so you want to be at the top right but they're end up being at the bottom left which is unfortunate and it makes me uh oh <laughs> well there we go so i'm just some jack hole with an opinion about oh okay oh are you, Didn't that you ever, sarcastic clap end up like in a norwegian music video yes it did but i don't know <laughs> if uh she is norwegian but you know that's like the most famous thing i've ever done that video's got like a billion views or 10 million views or whatever. I mean, you were on Fox five though. Yeah. But this video has got 10 million views <laughs> on YouTube. She's like a big pop star now. Really? That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, uh, I can't remember her name. Oh, Mo. no. Let's, oh, <laughs> it's oh, oh, let's go. Just hit the button. <laughs> uh, took a first swing at spelling Dimitri. Turned out I had the wrong one. Oh, uh, there's, I don't have anything to say. 2000. 12 doesn't matter. I don't, I don't remember. Uh, I have nothing to say about him. I like him. He has, yeah, he has a baby, which I re remember during the pandemic. Uh, they play with Brandon Dillon, maybe not. I don't know. That's it. Uh, uh TJ Oshi didn't like the name the Kraken. Did I spell Kraken wrong? <laughs> no, you did not. Cool. I like it. I like the name Kraken. This I isn't too. our backdoor conversation about Kraken. But I think it's cool. I heard, I understand that some people think of it as like, just like a reference to like the Liam Neeson remake of Clash of the Titans, or just a reference to like, like a sea monster from Price of the Caribbean. But I'll just stay, say this for my like nerd bona fides, that my first childhood understanding of the term Kraken is from the blue monster, like summon creature, the polar Kraken from Magic the Gathering, which oh, I played. Wow. At lunchtime at West Frederick Middle School until they banned it from 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 the school because it was basically turning into like a shadow economy. <laughs> so I like my, and I like Krakens. There you have it. Yeah, my favorite part about the Kraken name was that I remember in January, uh, Danya, who's on our site, uh, she uh, she kind of dropped this report uh, that someone uh, said on radio that she heard. And uh, so basically, Danya helped first report that name, which Seattle actually had to respond to 
and uh, who who is who's Jay or, or or Silent Bob? Silent Kevin Bob. Kevin Smith. Yeah, Kevin Smith. And then Jason responded. Muse, I think, is uh, the uh, the. Uh, is... okay. But but he uh, he responded to our tweet, and I think that was one of the first times a movie star had actually legitimately retweeted us. Uh, so <laughs> that was that was really cool. Kevin and Smith random. did that, huh? Yeah, yeah. Um, when you get a chance, uh, I want you to uh, and and listeners, audience, don't do this at home. But Ian, do this. Um, just Google Kevin Smith worst tweet sometime. Okay. Oh God! Don't do it Is right it now. Bad? I'm definitely not doing it on this podcast. Okay. Video, whatever we're doing. Uh, so okay. so so Donnie broke. That's awesome. Uh, and we're we're happy with it overall. What do you? Desi- you're a design dude. What do you think of the the, of the look? I love the look. I thought it was. Um, I thought it was amazing. I. The S was really well done. Um, you know, the only beef I had was that they ca- they called their colors blue. Was that a teal? It's, or... it's in that it's in that in between a blue and green. Yeah. And I, that made me want to like break something against. <laughs> I don't know. Like, but but like, it was great. I I, I really thought uh, the video that they did kind of suggesting it. I got really excited uh, when they did that because I was like, oh, it's a kraken. We got it. Yeah. <laughs> so, I just I just love the the fact that Danya first reported it. I mean it was Badass. amazing. So uh ironical that uh Ocean <laughs> liked the name because I feel like he's extremely likely to play for them. I agree. That's I awesome. agree. Uh kids sort of just slaying it during uh lockdown, huh? Yeah, has a new one. Has has three now, his first boy. He's got a hot Camp- fresh boy, huh? Yeah, he, Campbell was born during the uh Campbell Oshi. Campbell Oshi, yeah. Named after your second favorite canned food company. <laughs> True. What's your first favorite? Uh, I think it was Franco American because I love that spaghetti. Uh, was it? Oh, I thought it was Chef Boyer D. My bad. No, no, come on, come on. Oh, I'm, I didn't mean. I'm, to, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to insult your fancy food tastes. Uh, is that it for Oshi? It is. Let's move on. Uh, oh. Alexander Novechkin, dad, second time. I yep, guess that actually correct. happened prior to the the thing, but it just what. Mind What's the me. name of the child? Do you know? Do you know? Do you know? At all? I do not know. It is, uh, Ilya, who I'm assuming he named after Ilya Kovalchuk, even though probably not. But that's wild. You could tell that you and I hung out with Fedor too much a long time ago because we call it. Yeah, we call him Kovalchuk. Like he wants us to. Um, played NHL versus Wayne Gretzky. And it reminded me of hanging out with my nephew when his attention span's too short. <laughs> he was just not feeling like I, I, I'm saying that this was a tough time. It was very hard to like program any kind of entertainment anywhere. But Ovi's mind was just everywhere. He was in the game. He was upset. He was scoring. He wasn't answering Wayne's questions. His mic was too far. He's getting, getting too much room noise in the mic, which obviously bothers me. Yeah, no, I feel like he's always like that. So. <laughs> I was a surprise. The best moment was when he scored with like five seconds left. Yes, with uh, Kemp, with Michael Kempney of all people, <laughs> down um, below the down below the circles. One one conversation that uh, Brennan and I have been having over and over again is whether or not Ovechkin is a zaddy. I feel like this is something that's probably too big of a topic to even touch here. But I want everyone to know that it's it's, it's something that we're sort of marinating on whether or not Ovechkin as a daddy times two is now in fact a zaddy. Um, the jury is out. That's all I'll say about that. And, and I'm not even asking because I've seen the clothes you wear. You don't get to vote. That said, I'm wearing a Guy Fieri t-shirt, so I don't get to vote either. Uh, Alex, you mentioned anything else? No, that's, that's fine. Uh, this slide's about uh, Richard Ponick. He is on the Capitals. Good job. Yep. Reportedly. Yep. Yep. I can confirm it. This next... Oh, no, I have a... Okay. Uh... Oh, he, that's right. So he went on to the fourth line, and then he's interesting. Because yeah. all of a sudden, the yeah. fourth line was dominating, huh? He started crushing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the Caps have a good fourth line, and none of them are pregnant. So that's good. They're going to stay unified. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not bad if they're pregnant. I'm just saying that they're... It doesn't matter. And obviously, I meant like their oh. partners would be pregnant. It doesn't matter. Uh, not, not playing. This isn't. Uh, I heard it was an upper body injury. Is that a totally made up thing? Do we have any idea what it is? Uh, I didn't hear that, but I okay, believe you. I might have made that up. I am going to cross that out. You don't. You won't see this. Uh, but it is. No, I see it. I see it. I okay. see it. 
There we go. So nothing to see here. I have no idea what's going. On. I do we have? Do you have any idea? Where is he? In DC, he's still training uh, at at MedStar. I almost called it Kettler. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Forgot cool. it was was named MedStar. Yeah, I knew that. All right, next slide. Clear my thing. Okay, <laughs> Jonas or Jonas Siegenthaler. Uh, I had I. He's good. He's good. Yeah. Uh, plays with Nick Jensen sometimes. Uh, yeah, that's it. All right. Get sort of get just get just sort of burn it through here at the end. Uh, Jacob the Snack Verana. Yep. Devastating numbers. Twenty five goals, twenty seven assists. That's a monster breakout season. I said it was huge season when I wrote this. In um, he made pasta. <laughs> I saw that, that one. A big accomplishment, yeah. I saw, it was actually kind of an interesting pasta. He had like the cherry tomatoes in it. I think so. With when you get those cherry tomatoes in the pasta, and I don't know what his bowl was about. Look, he was making like a wok or something like that. It's way too much heat for a pasta. But um, if you do it with your cherry tomatoes, you get like the pectin from like the skin as they like they like rupture, and you just like break them up a little bit, and you get a good thick like sort of starchy sauce. It's a good. It seemed decent to me, and they had some green in there, some color. I I respect it. I'm an olio yalio guy. So I just like keep it simple, you know, with my pastas. But your thoughts? Uh, yeah. All right, moving on. Yeah. Moving By the way, he got a girlfriend. Did he really? Yeah, he was. Uh, he was. He was dating a model. Uh, I'm not sure if they still are, but oh, it that's... seems like they might. It's awkward. Uh, wait, 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 wait. He... When did that start? Uh, that started, I think, two months ago. I wrote about it. I'm um, sorry. Who starts dating during lockdown? Well, he wasn't in America, so oh. and, okay. And we have a we have a we have a weird view of coronavirus because we're bad at our it. country. Yeah, we're really bad at it. We're probably the worst. <laughs> Even though some people say we're the best at it. <laughs> Gee, I wonder who Ian's talking about. <laughs> Moving on quickly. To, I don't know why. Why does it say Nikki Wilson? That's Bad just, copy and paste job. I don't know. You know what? That sounds about right. Um, good offensive numbers. I really liked his production this season. That said, I did pull out 88.7 on ISA percentage, uh, which is the lowest on the caps. Excuse me. The, the dwarves are singing me. Um, lowest save percentage on the caps during five on five. I suppose that's somewhat related to the uh, Kuznetsov effect. Uh, but more importantly, got a dog. Yeah, that's right. Correct. Name of the dog it, is Pally. Yes, it is. That's correct. I knew that because it was it. Just, it was like you know, that's like my. It's, oh my it's, gosh, I'm I'm not remembering this. Is that I helped someone make, I, I helped Foco make a bobblehead of Tom and Hallie together. It was on pre-order and it got delivered before the season started. <laughs> I mean that's that's pretty long. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, anything else about Nikki? Uh, uh sorry, Tom. No, Tom. Why yeah. did it say Tom Nicky? Big I again I think like the 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 Tom Wilson sort of like second generation or maybe third generation we're in it now and I, I'm really excited to see what he can do, especially if he like keeps like a top line role, which I'm fine with if he's anywhere in the top six, to be honest. I don't care. Yeah. Um Koozie though, right? Yeah. But let's see, during the they they did a mic'd up video the Capitals did of him, and instead of like cutting Cutting the video awkwardly, they actually bleeped out the curse words, and like eighty-five percent of it was curse words. It was amazing. From Wilson, just a potty yeah. mouth, just an absolute yeah. pirate mouth, huh? Yeah, doing cusses left and right. That's yeah, uh, on brand. I li- yeah, I liked it. I liked it. Um, I am excited to see him in Toronto in like a fixed location where, well, you know, we'll, we'll get to that in news and views. Actually, we'll get to that in, we're because oh. Oh, here we are. We're actually at the news. I um, I'll just say this. Uh, I had an earlier version of the slide that was word art with some cool gradients and drop shadows, and uh, apparently it wouldn't display. So I oh. had to sort of simplify it, and I just you know. So that that, that cupcake tree looks delicious, doesn't it? Though. Oh jeez. Uh, oh, the old cup logo design. Uh, all right. So, uh, news and views. First, the loss format. Um, I think. Yeah, I know nothing about it. I was thinking about it. like I think the Caps get out like a buy. Is this correct? No, no, uh, kinda. Well, kinda. So what happens is is that the Capitals are going to play 
one exhibition game on Wednesday against the Carolina Hurricanes. Oh, uh, that's the next slide. So you're jumping ahead a little bit, but okay. I'm sorry. Keep going. I'm sorry. Then, then they will play three round robin games to help determine seeding in the first round, or what I would call the second round. <laughs> uh, or I don't know. I don't. I don't know. So, so then, then there will be eight teams in each division with the seeds five through twelve playing a five-game series, it's called the qualifying round, uh, to get into that second round, or what the NHL is calling the first round. What in the hell? Is there... <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? Is, uh, I'm just, you know what, let's just... I'm just going to look at the calendar. Sense, right? No. I'm just going to look at the calendar, and when it says... Actually, I'm taking all next week off work, so... 18 hours or 15 hours of whatever a day of hockey, I'll be there for it. So I'm not super stressed about it, uh, except for when the games start, and then I'll be super stressed. Uh, but I don't understand that at all. You didn't clear it up one bit. So so, so basically, the Capitals round robin is like an extra three exhibition games. Are those going to be against like Metro teams? Those are going to be against Eastern the teams. top four seats. The top four seats in each conference will play in a round robin where they will each play each other. For like they cumulative help... goals, what? Like what? How? But like, if it's a round robin, how do you seed it? Like, you have to do it on like total goals, right? I think okay. This this is the part where I don't remember. Um, but it, the reports were that your your points percentage combined with how you do in the round robin will help determine the seeding. So that part I'm a little they should uh, do I'm not completely clear on chess elo. That, no, a... I pretty much read the entire playoff. PDF document was and like yeah, you cannot explain it to me. I, I cannot remember. All right, let's move on. There will be <laughs> playoff type games starting very, very soon. Next item, yes. the cup. Does it count? Oh, wait, uh, no. Yeah. I was I was on a uh, podcast with Courtney Laughlin. And I have it. I have I've queued up. I have not played it yet. I'm sorry. That, but I did say in there that I think it'll be harder to win the cup this year than previous years. A, because you're kind of restarting all willy-nilly in the you know just a random restart and then there's five rounds instead of four mm. so uh so i actually think it's that you're gonna see teams you know a lot of teams are just gonna go up to this next level and other teams are gonna scuffle to get there and if you don't get to that top level quick enough you're gonna already be out of the playoffs so i think this is one of those weird playoffs where the coyotes could win and it's are the gonna coyotes be in and it? it's also gonna be really funny so the, co the coyotes are in it yes they're, I believe they're the twelfth seed in the in the Western Conference. All right. Um, would you put an asterisk next to the winner, like five years from now, when you're getting in like a you're you're at like a wedding and you're like, that one didn't count. Who cares if the Coyotes won? <laughs> no, I, I I don't think so. What do you? How about you? What do you think? No, I th I, yeah, I I think the people that put an asterisk on it are buttholes. Yeah, I'm with you. All right. Next topic. Uh, please catch me up. The draft lottery. I. Was, oh no! I was waiting to find out who the winner was, and then there wasn't a winner. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, I'm gonna try. Uh, so <laughs> instead of just doing the draft lottery for the uh, six set of seven teams that that didn't make, yeah, the you playoffs, always want to have an odd number of teams eliminated. <laughs> That's okay. Keep going. They they decided to make it for uh, the normal, I think, fifteen or fourteen. What, how many teams don't make the playoffs? 15? Uh, yeah, so, 15 teams don't. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so they did the, or whatever. There was some random, I don't remember. This part, again, fuzzy. But, so they did the random drawing, and one of those uh, playoff teams <laughs> ended up winning the draft lottery. So uh, they have to have a second part of the draft lottery, I think, in a week or two. Um, and then... A after uh, that playoff round? After like that like play-in round? Yeah, I think. Or maybe it's before that. I don't know. How but, uh, pissed are the Detroit Red Wings? But but basically, we have a situation, Peter, where let's say the Penguins lose and they have a horrible goal differential, uh, and they end up finishing last in the playoffs. Now you don't unquote. don't you dare then, say that the, the Penguins can the win the first overall pick and uh, one of the generation's best players. Uh, and uh, oh, I forget the guy's name already. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter. He'll matter in three years. Who cares? <laughs> uh, that's that's uh, typical. Uh, next topic is the bub. 
the bubble. Oh, nope. Go away. What am I doing? How do I go back? Is that Frank Key down there? Yes, it is. Oh, God. That's terrifying. Okay, I am totally goofing up, but the bubble real quick is... Oh, God. <laughs> Everything's fine. We know what the rest of the topics are. Uh, I do have a little Frankie on there, yeah. Um, so, the competing teams, which are, I guess, 24 teams, are yes. in Edmonton and Toronto now. Yes, yes. Um, mm -hmm. And they brought their 31-player rosters with them, right? Yes, and then uh, I think there's 52 or 58 people in each in each organization that are there. So like 20. Oh, so like support staff, trainers, social, social media, media people. Guy. Right, of course, got to have them. Podcast attaches for Nick Dowd, <laughs> the guy that puts the pop filter on the microphone. Um, that and they're they're in like a little quarantine like like neighborhood. Uh, yeah, where but, the, not, but not in an actual bubble, which you pointed out today. <laughs> Correct. Yes, it's like not like biodome. Like yes, biodome. It's not. It's not a geodesic place in in Glendale. Um, the the um, the NBA, as like sort of wise as they were, they did put it in Florida. So that that seems like a somewhat of a, a goof up. Whereas this one is in um, Edmonton and Toronto, which are doing relatively okay right now. Uh, what, what countries are they in? What countries are what in? The two host cities. They're both in Can Oh, I get you. They're both Not outside America. the United States. Yes. <laughs> so um, it'll be fine, probably. Yeah, Hopefully. and and the numbers were really good out of like uh, Toronto in the last like week, so that's that's encouraging. But they're not getting like you know exclusive access to movies. They're just getting what are they getting for free? Uh, hotels. Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons. Uh. And then they can play like soccer in like the arena bowl field. But they're not going to. They're just going to play Mario Kart and uh, yeah. like Warzone. Yeah, the Capitals Battle are going to sit on the Capitals are going to sit on benches and take photos with their social media guy and play Mario Kart on <laughs> if, the N sixty four or whatever they have. So. They play the yeah, play the OG. They might play like the Super Nintendo Mario Kart. Like they may be like that kind of like crotchety old man. Like when this game got the red shell, <laughs> that's when it all went downhill. Um, the um, if any players are at the hotel and they've got good internet, hit me up. We'll duo in Valorant. If any of you guys are into the uh, tactical shooters, like that guy from the U.S. developmental program, <laughs> USHL. Thank you. Uh, crowd noises. I didn't watch the exhibition game earlier. Is it weird? I didn't actually hear it, so I don't. Baseball is the best. Baseball, like I mean, R.I.P. On Fox was amazing. Yeah, that was amazing, but. I it, they played like I only watched the. It was weird games, because like so the like, Penguins scored, the Penguins scored, and they were an away team, and then they got their goal horn, which made no sense, and then the crowd was really loud, and wait, then the Flyers scored, and it was like quiet, and I didn't understand. Does that mean if like if like the Caps are playing the like Columbus and Columbus scores, they'll play the damn cannon sound effect? I, you would think not, but I'll throw a brick at my TV. But, <laughs> but suggesting, but the suggestion from this telecast is yes. All Which right. would be really freaking backwards. So I liked we'll I, I, I liked the, like the like the tarp setup around like the the lower bowl. That was pretty cool. Yeah, it it didn't even seem like it was in an arena. It felt like it was literally in a bubble. Yeah. So. Uh, I was listening to some other crotchety Canadian men talk to like their like the COO, the the oh, sorry the chief content officer uh, of the NHL, and they they seem to be pretty happy with the presentation. It looked pretty good to me. So um, I'm excited to yeah. see see it and i guess to that point well is there anything else that you think i need to talk about um i'm trying to think um I, no all right here we go then uh there is some <laughs> there was some news uh that we missed so do you want to yeah peter um and readers <laughs> uh, i did write about this but uh i'm sorry to tell you that Brooks Like and Julian Huff, uh, well, they said they separated but. during the pandemic. But recently, it sounded like they might be getting back together. So it's still completely unclear. But all I know is uh, Brooks Like is in Idaho, away from Julian Huff in California. And uh, he's taking I'm not thirst, sure you're right about that. Yeah, and he's talking about thirst. He's taking thirst traps. 
uh, on his Instagram Which and is calling him that. not a phrase I want you to know, but okay. I yeah. was listening to Elliot in the Morning like I do every day, and Diane's Dirt, I think they said that Julianne and Brooks together were together for her birthday. So you, uh, are, you sir, are behind uh, on your gossip. Oh, <laughs> and as much as Elise and I pretend like we don't care about this, we still know all the breaking details. <laughs> all right. Uh, last item. Uh, what's next? Um, there are games. Uh, so, uh, people watching this are probably watching this on Wednesday. There's a game today at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. It's Caps Hockey for the first time since March 12. Get that happening. Not real hockey. I don't even know who it's against. Who is it against? The Carolina Hurricanes. Not my fave. Okay. Unfortunately. All the rivals, all the geographical rivals are playing each other. Shoot. Is Dougie exhibition. Hamilton back? Yes. I, I, you know, the thing that just occurred to me is that, like, the Caps aren't the only team that would get, like, healthier and recover over yeah. time. I was really I thinking think that Gensel, would just... Gensel came back. Gensel came back for the Penguins, I think. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's right. The Penguins were so banged up. They're so... Yeah, no. I'm going to have to reread six months of... Damn. Should have done this for the whole league. Should have done this for the whole league. All 800 players. Uh, then on Saturday, is that another exhibition game or is that a real hockey game? I only know the dates that those are real games. So you, that would be the first round robin game. You only know the dates. Yeah. Are, are days worse. of the week meaningless to your ass now? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Peter. Yeah. Yeah. I All never right. know what day it is. I, 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 I don't know if I'm days. jealous or pitying you. Uh, and then next week, Monday and Thursday, I don't even think the Thursday game has a time of day yet for real. Neither does the Monday one. Okay. But, but it's assumed it'll be at four because all round robin games are supposed to be at four, but I think they might be having like TV uh, considerations, meaning, right. um, you know, who's going to get national and stuff like that. So, but it, it they'll probably be at four, but we don't know. Is it going to be so, on? Uh, are like Craig and or like Craig Lachlan and Joe Beninati? Are they going to be oh, covering a, games? Or I have they... a weird understanding of this. So, so you know how in past years the Capitals get. The first round. Uh, yes. They cover local the coverage for the first round. round. Yeah. Yeah. So the round robin is basically regular season. But what can happen is, is that since NBC didn't take uh, all the local games that they were supposed to get for the Caps, they can take one from uh. them contractually. So it is possible that there could be a national one and it be blacked out locally. Um, that would suck. But, but um, from what I was told is that they should, keyword should, uh, have the first round games. But again, the same thing could happen where, where nationally they could be plucked. But mm -hmm. um, it's kind of a crapshoot and they're still talking about it and everything is uh, – one of the weirdest things about the pandemic was like just like whenever you hear NHL news, you would ha have reports – but then everybody would would couch it in language like, "Well, it could change tomorrow." Yeah, you know, depending on the conditions and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, so we'll find out soon. But hey, every game will be on Caps Radio. Sweet. Okay. So that's cool. Look at um, I like the eyeliner sort of like look on on <laughs> Todd here, and then it looks like look how like delicate the quaff is. Yeah. Really Man, good. Claire is so great. Very Man. yeah, lovely stuff. All right. Um, that is um, yeah. That's it. That's the end. Oh, I like the frog. Yeah, graphic oh, design. Oh, you use you use papyrus. Uh, no, I see. This is the thing. You don't even recognize a popular internet meme. This is not. This is uh, like an image you take off the internet. Like Rachel would be upset with you if you did not recognize this. I did not make that papyrus. This is image already exists. I just put the end over it in word art. Um, um. Thank you so much for uh, explaining hockey to me again. You're welcome. Uh, I feel like You're I welcome. finally am ready to take on the world uh, or the opposite of the world. I'm ready to retreat into my inner world of uh, hockey, uh, which is mostly just making jokes on the Internet. So I'm ready for that. Let's do that. Will, will you have anxiety attacks writing recaps? Uh, I won't know the difference between the, the <laughs> game related anxiety attack and just sort of the background radiation that is my life these days. Yeah. So I think, I think I think if you're waiting for me to get a little bit more edgy and sort of like alienate more audience people, yeah, yeah, well, you're in for a trait. This is gonna be, you know, what's it like with a raw nerve, just exposed, just sort of arterial spray coming out? One, let's let's get into that vibe, you know.
Let's drop the puck. Yeah. Uh, Ian, thank you so much. Uh, this was a, a delight. I feel uh, enriched. And uh, let's get some hockey. Yeah. And you know what? I learned through this that uh, even though I spent hundreds of hours covering hockey over the last few months, I still barely know anything. You retained so. nothing. Never <laughs> no. I'm a pretty dumb guy, so I apologize. <laughs> All right, dude. I will talk to you soon. All right. Bye.